Well, I finally did it. I finally finished The Last of Us Part 2. God knows I didn't want to. And now that I finished it, I kind of wish I didn't. I don't know that this is going to be so much of a review. Like, the game's well out at this point, so I don't know that I need to really tell you if, like, it's a game that's worth 60 bucks or not. I think you're long past making that decision, so this is more of just... Really just me venting. Uh, gosh. I, I was waiting for that game to pay off, and for me, it never did. And as a result, I have some things I gotta get off my chest. Mostly because of my frustration at the state of, of games writing and games and narratives in general. Uh, this should go without saying, but these are my thoughts. These are my takes. If you loved the game, that's great. <laughs> I'm not telling you you have to not like it now. Uh, far from it, in fact. I would never try to convince somebody a game they like is not good. Unless it's Skyrim. And before I start digging into my issues... Yeah, this is going to be very, very spoilery. It's going to spoil the entire game. It'll spoil the ending of the game, because there's no way to not talk about it. Which is another issue, given that, I guess, reviewers couldn't talk about it. That's, boy, I, I got issues with that. But anyway, spoilers. If you haven't finished it, maybe don't watch this. Or maybe only watch this if you have no intention of finishing it, which I really should have trusted my instincts on that one. But anyway, let me just start by saying that there's a lot about The Last of Us 2 that I really, really, really liked, which is what makes it even more frustrating. My biggest issue with The Last of Us 1, uh, bizarrely, it's inverted. Um, I, I kind of liked the story. I thought it was, I, the ending twist I thought was pretty good. It was, it was pretty daring. I thought it had something to say, which I appreciated. I thought it was, it was consistent with its characters and all that stuff. My issue with The Last of Us 1 was the gameplay. I thought the game was a pretty subpar survival horror game. And that's kind of where it ended. I was like, you know what? The story's all right. The gameplay I could take or leave. And that's kind of where Last of Us 1 was. My issues with The Last of Us 2 are basically inverted from the first one. I really like the gameplay. I think the the kind of... Op I think the environment sim sort of encounters you have with other human enemies is really, really cool. And the sort of cat and mouse you can do with the AI in the game, super, super on point. I think that works super well with the, the crafting, with the weapon systems, the stealth mechanics. The environmental design, it's all just super locked together and it's so good. And then the writing just elbows elbows it out of the way to, tr to continually take the stage and the, uh, the attention of the player. Which is really frustrating for the problems I'm about to get into. So, the first of all, the top line one, the easiest one to grab. Uh, the thing that's probably the most obvious flaw about the game is that it uses violence to lecture you about how violence is bad. So to kind of prevent my take on it and why I think this game sort of is really just an, a frustrating waste of time, <laughs> let me sort of get into my, I guess, my theories and how I judge something. I, I think art is supposed to evoke emotion, right? Or it's supposed to, to present a, uh, a perspective you didn't have. Art is there to, to teach us about the human experience. Uh, art is there to... to entertain us, yes, but I think it can also expand our horizons. It can it can enrich our lives. So when when consuming art, uh, evocative art, art that evokes emotion, uh, my my thoughts always go to what emotion is it invoking and why? What is it trying to say? What what feeling is it trying to leave me with? Or is it just a creator expressing themselves without intent? Sometimes that can happen too, and then it's kind of beholden on the audience uh, because they're a participant in this express you know, I don't want to break it all the way down into like to Greek ideas of, of storytelling and, and audience participation and stuff like that, but that's kind of where I'm coming from when I when it comes to critiquing this story. All right, so what is this game trying to do and what is it trying to evoke? Uh, clearly, sadness, <laughs> sadness and disgust and revulsion and misery. Uh, this is a miserable game, and I don't mean that to to say that it's like it's horrible. It's just miserable. It wallows in misery. Uh, and it expresses that in a few different ways. The camera and the photorealistic violence that you are routinely forced to stare directly at. Uh, the camera hangs on violence and other, like, adult things way too long. Like, what's the point? Uh, why rub our faces in disgusting viscera more than once or more than five times? It does it every time. So I do think that in, in certain moments that has a point, she'll like, no, the violence here is real and you're not allowed to emotionally distance from it. But after that's been done a couple of times, why continue to do it? It happens routinely over the game's 20 to 25 hour runtime, and by the end of the game, it's just, it's just kind of tasteless that it keeps happening. Not to mention that the camera does this in other regards too. There's the sex scene. That just, why show that much of it? Why show that much of it? I get it, it's that moment in the narrative when Walls are breaking down and people are frazzled and emotional. Like, I just, I feel like the creators watched Blade Runner and they were like, we want that scene between Deckard and Rachel. Or they just watched a variety of quote unquote adult movies and decided that it was time to put a scene like that in a video game. So this was their chance and they decided to linger on it as long as they could, presumably to brag to the audience that finally games were grown up enough to have content like this in it. But what point did it serve? 
ultimately for me, none. Now, I should admit, like, I'm, I'm a fan of gratuity. I like gratuitous violence and sex. Who doesn't? But the, obviously the point of this game is not to celebrate those things. It's to, uh, it's to mourn them or make you feel terrible about looking at them. There are movies like, like Crank, for instance, that are so beyond uh, gratuity when it comes to violence and sex. But those movies are presented in a fun way because the point is entertainment. Maybe that also make you think about how getting those things full blast really does desensitize you. Certainly the Crank films, by the end of them, your, your, your mind is just fried. But Last of Us Part Two kind of makes a point of not desensitizing you. It hits you with these increasingly horrific images of human, human barbarism. Again, to what end? I kind of don't think there is one. I'm kind of tiptoeing towards it, towards the actual ending. Uh, the misery also expresses itself in other ways, namely the, the sort of dread that hangs over the entire story. So the story is told in such a way that you know bad things are happening. Uh, it's told from Ellie's perspective through three days. You're pretty sure bad things are going to happen there just because of the foreboding and the, the tone of the story. But then it rewinds and you play as Abby, which is the part reviewers weren't allowed to talk about, which boggles my mind, and I'll get to that more in a second. But when you're playing as Abby, who arguably is the more empathetic character, she's the one who is actually seeking redemption and, and trying to alleviate her guilt versus Ellie, who is not. So the way the game was architected, and my suspicion, also given that reviewers were not allowed to talk about the second half of the game, is that the game meant to pull this like grand switcheroo on you. You play as Ellie and you play through her story, you see Joel get killed, and then you as the player empathize with her and you're like, yeah, go get your vengeance. And then we switch over to Abby, where we're kind of forced to recognize, wait a minute, Ellie's actually the bad guy. Whoa, 5,000 IQ play, right? Um, and that, that, like, that turnabout or that realization wouldn't really happen, that like prank if reviewers were allowed to talk about Abby's storyline, and specifically the way the story ends. The problem with that is, when you play through Ellie's storyline, you know how Abby's story is going to end, sort of. Uh, it does get to a certain point where it start pushes, starts pushing up beyond that, but for the 12 to 15 hours you're playing as Abby, you already know what's going to happen, and you know that you can do nothing to stop it. So, and this, this again drives back to the interactivity part of it, why are you forcing me to play through all these terrible things when I cannot change them? And also changing things is the foundation of video games. And also you're lecturing me about how bad this all is on the way, essentially asking me to change what I can't change. It's, it's absurd. It's absurd, really. The idea that you're playing through these stories and watching all these characters suffer, especially as you're being asked to empathize with them, is really just frustrating. Your, your options there as a player are to continue letting yourself get punched in the gut, even when those beats are obvious, or in some cases explicitly foretold, or you just distance yourself. But that's really frustrating in a game where so much of the game is, is uh, cutscenes. Why would you emotionally distance yourself from a story when most of, most of the game tells you this is what you should find valuable about it? The inevitability of it is really just frustrating, which all leads up to the game's final sequence, where interaction is kind of treated as a punishment. Uh, you switch back to playing as Ellie, you go for your final uh, quest of revenge, which could have also been resolved in a, in a plot sequence earlier on. They just tacked it on to the end. Let's go do it again. Ellie goes to find Abby again. So then you play through this whole annoying sequence where you kill a bunch more people, and then you find Abby all, all emaciated and crucified, literally crucified in a field. You cut her down. She's, a very, she's in a very pathetic state, and then you as Abby have to stab her to death. Uh, you don't actually, spoilers, whatever, but the whole sequence where you have to laboriously slash her while she's screaming, uh, especially after she didn't want to fight you. <sighs> there were multiple times where it was a QTE where I had to, like, fight her off or whatever, and I just put the controller down because I wanted to see Ellie die at that point. I did not want to finish this narrative because it had nothing to tell me, or at least it wasn't leading to anything. When you compare this to other tales of sorrow, especially, like, other especially other tales where it's it's communicated early on that this will be a, a story of suffering. Um, two that come to my mind are Les Miserables, the, the musical, and Requiem for a Dream. Um, at least in Les Mis' cir circumstance, there are notes of redemption and hope. Uh, there are characters that have to sacrifice themselves to give opportunities to other characters. You almost see that happen in Last of Us Part Two. Abby shows mercy multiple times, only to have it thrown back in her face. Interesting plot development doesn't go anywhere. Uh, and in the case of like Requiem for a Dream, 
I actually haven't watched it because I'm not the kind of person who really wants to watch a movie that is just pure suffering. I'm not really the kind of person who just wants to watch a movie of people suffering and doing bad things to each other or watching their lives fall apart because of, of bad circumstances. That said, that movie probably does leave you with, uh, with a lot to think about. So I think in that case, it's effective art. But then the problem is this is a different medium, right? This is video games. Video games are interactive. So it's that's to me just the ultimate frustration when you combine all those factors is that it's bad enough to see it like it's bad enough to see humans being vicious to each other or or an arm get photorealistically broken by a pipe like these are just horrible things to look at it's even worse to do it like in a video game um what's baffling is being forced to do it while also being lectured about how tragic it is Imagine a, a Requiem for a Dream video game where you see these tales and your only input is to shove the needles in people's arms. What's the value in that? What? I, I guess maybe uh, it might be fun to slip into that mode, I guess, or just the ultimate masochism of it, but I don't get it. I will agree that on some level it's it kind of breaks new ground in terms of like audience manipulation in terms of the the gameplay setup the story beats that you arrive at and then forcing you to do bad things to characters you want to you want to enjoy the only thing in the game that makes me think that there is some awareness or acknowledgement of that dynamic is the moth imagery which also leads us to the ending itself so Again, big spoilers here, and this kind of leans on my interpretation, but I think it's pretty obvious. Ellie commits suicide, right? I might... Maybe not. Um, which, which kind of, to me, leads into the, some of the cowardice of the ending, but... So what do we see? We see Ellie come back to her home, Dina's gone. Uh, she's forced to realize that not only could she not take her revenge, she didn't have the, the metal or the, uh, the willingness to go through with it against Abby because she let her go. But then she also lost her family. Uh, so she's sitting there plucking away on her acoustic guitar because what kind of high art does not have somebody noodling on, a, on an acoustic guitar? And then she leaves uh, the house. We see her going back into the woods, but she left the guitar behind, um, which is not something she would do, I think, if she were going to go find Dina and try to, you know, enjoy a family life. Uh, and then also the imagery of the moth itself. Uh, there's the whole phrase, you know, attracted like a moth to flame. The idea there is that moths, because of how they're made, are attracted to destruction. Uh, a moth has no choice. It is what it is. It behaves how it does. And sometimes it will burn itself alive because it's drawn to light and fire. So what's the goddamn message there? Is that Ellie is too broken or that her nature is too set to is she beyond redemption that's what we're being told ellie is ellie is recognizing that she is a, a a harbinger of death and destruction to anyone around her therefore her only choice is to remove herself from the world because fuck that man i why do i need to play through a thoroughly unpleasant 25 hour experience just to be told that some people are beyond saving even if that is like real or gritty and maybe sometimes stories aren't comfortable i don't need to hear that I live in the real world all the time. I don't need to hear that. I think a lot of people don't need to hear that. I, I won't even talk about context. Like, Last of Us Part Two had the utter misfortune of launching in a time when most people are already under a good deal of mental duress based on the state of the world, but it's not their fault that they had the misfortune of releasing a, a tale of abject human woe and telling a story of utter hopelessness in a time when people need hope. That's not their fault, but I do have to say for myself, I was utterly galled at the ending and what what frustrates me even more is they couldn't even show it like in a game that seems to pride itself again with the camera the sex the violence a game that seems to pride itself on being so adult that it can show anything it can show the most gritty thing it had to take the lamest way out of the ending this like open-ended sort of uh, Chris Nolan, like, I don't know, man, what do you think happened? It's open to interpretation. So to, to have a game that seemed to revel in violence and gore and the darkest parts of humanity to then have this wishy-washy ending where they didn't put a, a hard conclusion on it, but then imply an even worse conclusion, I have very little respect for. Very little. Part of me thinks that they had to leave some kind of hook open for Last of Us 3. 
Um, maybe some kind of BS ending where Ellie actually does go and find Dina and everything's fine despite what the game heavily, heavily implies. It's just gross, man. It's just gross. Uh, part of me is like, you went to all this effort to, to tell me this message and you made me play through all this, this garbage? <laughs> like, I, I just don't... It wasn't all garbage. Again, I have to go back to the game itself. It was actually pretty fun to play. Uh, which led to this weird, like, sine wave of emotion. If the story shut up for long enough, I would actually have fun playing the game. And then uh, dread would land the second the camera's control was taken away from me. So I would exit cutscenes frustrated and annoyed at what I was being shown and my powerlessness to stop it. And then I would enjoy exploring open areas, getting into engaging combat scenarios, and then right back to frustration with every cutscene. What's, what's most vexing is that these are not new ideas either. You know, the idea, what, what, if, what, what if video game henchmen were real people? What if you're actually the bad guy in a video game? Like, all of these ideas are kind of explored in cheesy three to five minute sketches that landed on YouTube in like 2012. And that's about what the thought is worth. It's like, heh, and then you move on. Except somebody decided to make a full game, sort of really drilling the idea into your head that no, video game people are people and violence is bad. Like, yeah, dude, I get it. I was just hoping that it would have something more to say by the end, and I'm frustrated that it did not. By my take, by my take. What vexes me even more on top of that, given that I kind of already said that I love the game so much, is that I'm extra annoyed with the writing for taking all the attention. There's so much good work in that game. Uh, there's so much good game design, so much incredible environmental design. And to me, all that incredible work is just so tinged with frustration because of the writing and the story that this, this is going to be a little assumptive. To me, I kind of feel bad about the other departments in Naughty Dog. Um, and, and that's way assumptive. I hope that everyone was bought into this vision for this game. Because I would, if I were, uh, you know, a sound designer, I would be annoyed. <laughs> I would be kind of annoyed that in a game that I work so hard on, that the writing is the thing that demands all the attention and sucks all the air out of the room. Not even from the critical standpoint, from the way the game is presented. So much of the game's focus is on the writing and the story. I gotta be honest, this, this is a little small of me, but if I worked at Naughty Dog, I would be a little mad. You know, if, if I were an environmental artist, but the game routinely insisted that the story and the characters and the writing was the most important thing. I'd be a little annoyed about that. It's, a, it's kind of a game where the writing just continually screams, this is all about me. Meanwhile, me sitting there with a the controller just continually saying, I really wish it weren't. I wish it were about anything else. After, after finishing it, I can truly say, I don't ever want to play that game again. I don't ever want to see those characters again. And I don't ever, ever want to play a Last of Us game <laughs> ever again in my life. And, and there are like, tough rides that have a purpose. Uh, the infamous Schindler's List reference or whatever. That at least happened, and the message is that maybe we shouldn't commit those acts of barbarism in the future. But this character-focused tale around Ellie and Abby, what's... Again, I struggle to find the message, especially when Abby theoretically represents mercy and second chances, and then Ellie routinely proves over and over again that those things are not realistic in this world, or maybe for that character. So that's a shame. Uh, to some degree, I, I understand that, like, hey man, sometimes, sometimes real life isn't pleasant. Okay, I live in real life. You know, I paid 60 bucks for a game. I do think there is some value to it. If there are people who play games that have never once thought about the commodification of violence, then I can see this game doing some good. I can see it uh, maybe adding some perspective. I think there are other games that do it way better, but I can see there being some value there. But at the end of it all, like... What, what is our takeaway supposed to be? Other than some people are just broken beyond repair. And uh, why do I need to sit through a thoroughly unpleasant story to hear a thoroughly unpleasant message? I don't know. I, I kind of come up blank. Aside from the fact that the game's actually pretty fun to play. But not enough. Not enough to compensate for that. So, oh, okay, I just had to get that off my chest. Hopefully that made sense somewhere. I'm sure that there are people for whom The Last of Us 2 was a really emotional experience and they had a great time. And, and I would like to have your perspective. Um, I think a lot of it will probably revolve around interpretations of the ending. I think if you choose to interpret that, uh, that Ellie is going to go find her family and live happily ever after, after truly confronting the fact that she can't take revenge or that revenge wouldn't make her happy, then that's one thing. But again, I think leaving the guitar behind kind of signifies that. Hey man, maybe the guitar is the, is the visitation of her guilt that she's finally letting go. Um... But then the moth imagery doesn't quite hold up, does it? Well, that'll do it. Um, again, pretty pretty big disappointment. I guess to some degree I'm glad the game exists because maybe it'll 
serve as a, a warning about uh, that some like you got to ask why <laughs> science never thought to ask why so please ask why when you're writing your games um and maybe there's a why here that i just haven't grasped but i don't know i like to think that i like to think my experience is valid uh, but yours is too so uh, i'd like i am kind of desperate for another take on this uh, because i would like to think more kindly about this game given how much how much good development and design and work went into it. So that'll do it for me today. Whew, I feel a little bit lighter now that I got that off my chest. Uh, although if this were a Last of Us 2 video, at the end I would feel just as shitty as at the beginning, and a lot of people would have suffered along the way, which I guess is you guys. You guys are all the NPCs that get stabbed and turn to camera while you arterially bleed out. Man, the eighth time I saw that crap, I was done with it. Like, why do you keep showing me this? Uh, I'm just going to keep ranting if I keep going. Thank you for watching. Um, I... Hope to do this more. I, I feel bad because this is like the second one that I've been pretty negative on. Uh, there was Avengers and now this, and I'm like, Rah. hopefully me saying that the game is good is some excuse. I, I promise I'm gonna talk about good games <laughs> eventually. Last of Us 2 has some good things in it. Um, I just feel bad being so negative. So I promise happier game times are, are ahead, hopefully. Uh, and uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>